Alright guys, forgive me because I know the video is not the best. Uh, of course, we can't use any screen capture software uh, while inside the BIOS. But we want to take a good look at the UEFI BIOS. Uh, this is the utility from the Republic of Gamers for ASUS. Uh, this is the advanced mode. It has a favorite section, which I really just don't even use. Um, but you can set up, you can press F4. Use the cursor to select an item and then press F4 on your keyboard and it'll pretty much add any one of these options from any list over into the My Favorites. So, for example, if you were the kind of person who wants to come in, uh, you know, and, and switch your overclock on and off. So, you know, you want to add in your manual and add in your auto and come over here and add in your... Uh, core ratio things like that then uh, you can add all that to the favorites or, or anything you want you can add boot priorities over uh, to the favorites tab you know uh, again like I say anything you want um, well, let's start here in the extreme tweaker we'll go back up to the top real quick if I can click on this I can't sit at my desk like normal maybe I can't click on that um, right now at stock you know I've got everything just set up pretty much for stock uh, the CPU is not overclocked the RAM is just running at normal XMP settings um, and the first option you have really is your overclocking presets and you can see it's got quite a few uh, presets for that different options that you can choose and uh, that's your RAM frequency and things like that but uh, I don't really mess with that one too much You've got your AI overclocker. You can set it for auto, manual, or the XMP. Um, and I said it's at XMP settings, but it's actually not. I apologize. I was wrong. But so now it is. And you see it's pretty much the same. I just manually set it basically to the XMP setting. Um, and then, of course, you have, and I'm going to put it back so that I can mess with some other things. Then, of course, you have your CPU strap, which... Uh, you know affects the overclocking and and affects the uh, megahertz for the CPU I'm not gonna mess with that leave it at auto the easiest way to come into this particular one and overclock anything you want to sync all cores and you can pretty much just go in and I can't even reach my keyboard from auto simply clicking on the syncing all cores and clicking on you know any one of the cores really but usually the top one is your best and then it's simple as pressing shift and setting your uh, core clock to whatever you want it as. Oops. So, you know, 39 would basically be stock. That'll give you your 3900 megahertz. Um, you know, you can overclock. Like in my particular case, this processor tops out right about 44. Uh, any more than that, and it just won't boot up. Um, honestly, I rarely even go that high. I just don't need to. I usually just leave it at auto. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, but overclocking is super easy with this BIOS uh, because of that. And I think that's pretty common in high-end boards. Uh, of course, with this particular board, you could go a lot further and push it a lot more with, you know, uh, custom loops and, you know, things like that. You come down here a little bit further past all the cores. You've got your internal PLL over voltage, your BCLK frequency for your RAM. Uh, it's basically just your ratio, whether it's 100 for 100 or 100 for 133. You know, easy enough to leave it at auto. Your frequency, like I say, I normally just set mine at 2133 because that's what my RAM is. I don't even bother trying to overclock the RAM. There's just no point. The, the, the benefits are minimal with my particular setup. I do like to enable the extreme tweaking. It just makes things a little more stable. Uh, you know, you've got so many options. You've got an automatic CPU level up. You can come in here and just pick where you want it to try to aim for. And it'll go 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, or it'll just auto and it'll level up until it'll overclock, automatically overclock your processor basically until it's unstable. And then it'll bring it down a notch. Uh, I don't actually use that because I'd rather just manually overclock. 
Um, and this is also done in the AI Suite software, which I'll show you in another section of the video. And then you've got, of course, all the standards, EPU power saving mode, you know, your DRAM timing control. This is where you actually set your latency, CAS delay, your pre-time, and all that stuff. Again, I leave it all at auto and just let it run at stock settings, which uh, for me are just the best. You know, but if you have maybe aging RAM or if you just really want to squeeze as much as you can for benchmarks or something like that, then uh, you do have those options. Um, you have all the Digi Power Control GPU, and this is something I want to take a look at, the Tweaker's Paradise. Um, it has some of the other features which maybe aren't on a lot of other motherboards. This is something that, for the most part, I think a lot of this is particular to this uh, motherboard, at least in this setup. And it's just got a lot of options. You can see we'll run through some of the options here. You've got shadow voltage, termination, anti-aliasing. You know, you can set all those. I keep it all at auto. Uh clock crossing reset voltage all this stuff i mean so much of this is really for serious serious overclockers who are using you know ln2 and things like that that's not something that the average user is going to use even with a uh, custom loop or anything like that the only thing i do i go in i turn off the internal graphics of course i'm using a graphics card so i don't need it to try to run uh graphics on my you know on my actual processor so that's a really nice feature for the uh, Tweaker's Paradise. And then you've got all of your voltage controls for everything from the, uh, you know, from every bridge to the core voltages to the DRAM voltages, you know, everything. You can control all the voltage. And I leave it set at manual mode, but I keep most of them set at auto after that. Uh, I think the only one... I usually change, where is it at? It's up here. You know, for overclocking, I usually set the CPU core voltage uh, pretty much a little bit closer to the maximum. At auto, it lowers the voltage a little bit. It could run at like 1.2 something, 1.25, I believe it is. Uh, then you have your main section, which pretty much just lists what you have. Uh, there's not a lot you can change here. The system date and the system time is all you can change. You can set up some security, which I don't bother with because nobody touches my computer but me. Then you have the advanced settings where you can set up your CPU configuration, your PCH configuration, SATA configurations, just all those different configurations. And we'll take a look at those. CPU configuration. Um, you know, this is the basic speed your minimum speed. It's just kind of a readout showing you what it is. Uh, down here below you have the Intel Adaptive Thermal Monitor. Uh, I like to keep that enabled. It basically reads temperatures off the motherboard and off of everything else. And then of course I keep hyper-threading enabled. What's the point of having an Intel processor if you're not going to use the hyper-threading? Right, and then over here in the Monitor tab, uh, again you can see it's basically a thermometer and a little gauge kind of symbol and you can see they all have their little symbols to go along with the labeling um, it basically gives you all the different things that you can monitor on the motherboard fan speed uh, temperatures and voltages and you can go in and just look at all of them uh, on some of these I think you can adjust fan speeds no that's done in another part but you can set it up to either ignore the fan speed or to actually monitor it you know, uh, and I have it monitoring things which aren't even plugged in, you know, but there's just no reason to turn it off. I can turn it off. Uh, you can set it up basically to alert you if the fan drops below, you know, this certain RPM. And then you can set it up for standard silent turbo or manual, which you can manually adjust any one of those settings in the AI suite. So, uh, once again, that's something we'll take a look at here in a moment uh, in another video. Uh, we'll go back, and that's basically it on that. Then you have, of course, your boot tab, 
and from the big from the top <clears throat> excuse me I pretty much always enable fast boot my computer turns on in literally just a few seconds uh, I have set up support pretty much only for the boot drive uh, which keeps it from reading other things and taking even just an extra few seconds or an extra half a second you know it just cuts down on time uh, but you can set that up to give all devices so that you have full set of support for everything in your computer or again you can streamline it and do set of support only for your boot drive which is all I need uh, I've got the hardware fast boot enabled um, and then the next boot after a power loss I have it on normal boot uh, so that I can double check and make sure that nothing has gone wrong instead of just a fast boot so uh, I like to do that I don't lose power often but just in case um, I keep my boot logo display that's basically the big eye that pops up for a half a second it's the ROG eye icon like you see here in the top left of your uh, corner of the screen um, I just have that set on full screen so you can see it I have again just to streamline the boot process I have the post delay time and the boot number lock state I have all that turned down as low as possible uh, the only thing I do is if there's an error, I have it wait for me so that it doesn't just kick out and I don't know what happened. I want it to tell me what happened. I hardly ever, pretty much never have errors. Uh, again, I have it coming in. You can set this for when you come to your BIOS, whether through the direct key on the motherboard or from pressing delete during boot up. I have it set up to come directly to the advanced mode. You could set it to go to easy mode, uh, but easy... Pardon me, easy mode is much more limited, uh, just has a few of the basics, that's not where I want to be. And then of course you have your boot priorities and your boot options, and you have your, uh, you could come in here and hit a boot override. For example, I have it with, where it boots to this Kingston, you know, my, my solid state drive for my operating system, uh, I could come in and pick a different one of these hard drives, except none of them have operating systems on it. We'll take a quick look over here. Uh, you see it's got the two little buttons here. Those are kind of like separate tabs. Again, this is the full thing and then this one, which I can't click on. There we go. This one is just the tools and uh, it takes you to the Asus Easy Flash 2 utility so that you could flash to BIOS, um, which you, can be done in a number of different ways on this motherboard. You have the ROG SSD Secure Erase, which I have not used and I don't intend to. Uh, they're frozen. I'm not going to erase any of them. Wow, how do I back out now? I've never actually used that and don't want to. Let's exit there. Ah, well now I have to go back. Ah, here we are. Okay, good. Uh, then you have your ASUS Overclocking Profiles, your ASUS Speed Information, and your OC Panel H Configure. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. It's basically just the basics that you need. It, it's some of the options that you have on that advanced tab, but uh, it's just here alone. Just like if you had put it in your favorites tab. Uh, these are just some of the basic things that you need to be able to overclock. Like I say, you want to set your voltage, you want to set your CPU ratio, and uh, I'm sure plenty of you guys know as much about that as I do. Um, coming back over here to the tool, it's just your speed information. It tells you about the kind of RAM that you're using, what the JDEC is, what the XMP settings are, your voltages and your clock ratios and things like that. Basic stuff. And uh, then again, your ASUS overclocking profile. And I don't actually have any profile set. I just manually do it every time I do it. So that's it. That's what you've got. And then I will exit. I'll go ahead and save some of those changes. I changed the fans. That was all I did. And that's that. And uh, that's the BIOS for you. And we'll come back and take a good look at the ASUS AI Suite 2. Um, once we get in here, you can see I've got the delete for the BIOS and that I that I was talking about for the post delay. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, guys.